Good day! Are we digitally ready? This is a question that teachers and learners are probably asking right now. With the advent of DepEd's Digital Rights Program, the Open Educational Resources, or OER, was woven together and finally realized. This project prioritizes the necessity to enhance the digital literacy skills of every teacher and learner in the country. Our OER mission is to connect the disconnected. OER is indeed an innovative initiative with a lofty aim to get disconnected schools and last my schools connected through ICT even without an internet connection. It is designed to cater to the need of these schools for interactivity, digitalization, and delivery of 21st century skills that will ensure that every learner is future ready. Join us in another training workshop and learn more about open educational resources, whose primary purpose is to provide support and assistance to learners and teachers in this rapid advancement of technology. Our goal is to build and strengthen the capabilities of public and private teachers, school heads, and supervisors by teaching you to create and design interactive, localized, and contextualized instructional materials for teaching using basic, advanced, and proficiency software and tools. Surely, this will be another exciting and engaging webinar training workshop. Together, let's all rise amidst this crisis. Para sa bata, para sa bayan, para sa guro. Sulo, ito kalidad. Magandang araw, Sir Wilbur po, at your service. Narito ang itulay upang gabayan ka sa inyong pag-aaral upang lubos na maunawaan ang iba't ibang paksa o subject. Ang itulay ay isang free online tutorial class na pinangungunahan ng ICTS Educational Technology Unit sa pumumuno ni Undersecretary Alain Del B. Pasqua. Ang programang ito ay hindi lamang para sa mga bata, kundi ito rin ay magsisilbing gabay sa mga magulang at mga guro kung paano nila ituturo o gagabayan sa bawat asignatura ang kanilang mga anak o mga estudyante. Sa kasalukuyan, ang self-learning module mula sa regyon ng Calabarzon at kilala sa tawag na pivot ang ginagamit sa ating itulay online class. Kaya ano pang hinihintay ninyo? Ihanda na ang inyong mga ballpen o lapis, papel o kwaderno at samahan kaming itulay ang pagkatuto para sa bawat batang Pilipino. Sama-sama tayong magtutulungan para malampasan ang mga hamon sa panahong ito. Halina't matuto kasama ang inyong online tutor sa oras na ito. Good afternoon to everybody. Uh, ako ang inyong makakasama sa araw na ito. Ako po si Tutor Mark and I will be your tutor for English 5. For today, we will be having the week 1 for third quarter at ang ating pong ginamit na material ay galing po sa Negros Oriental na SLM. Ulat, ulitin ko po ang ating pong ginamit ay uh, concept po mula po sa Negros Oriental at maliban po doon ay ginamit ko rin po ang iba't iba pang mga exercises na makikita natin available online. So I have a mix and blend of all of these materials para ibahagi po sa inyo ang ating tutorial session sa araw na ito. Kaya sa mga bata, sa mga mag-aaral na nasa grade 5, Kung kayo ay handa na, siguro doon yung hawak ninyo ang inyong mga self-learning module, ang inyong lapis o ang inyong lapis o ballpen, kasama ng inyong papel at aking ipapaliwanag sa abot ng aking makakaya ang inyong lesson para sa week 1. Kaya, ibabahagi ko na ang aking presentasyon. Sa mga mag-aaral natin, tandaan po, ang aking presentasyon ay makikita sa atin din pong DepEd Commons at ganun din po sa ating uh, YouTube channel, sa EdTech Unit at ganun din sa DepEd TV. Welcome to our Itulay online tutorial session for Grade 5 English. And for our Week 1 session, we are going to discuss all about the, how to distinguish the text types according to its purpose and features. 
Mga bata, huwag kayong matatakot ha. Kapag ating tinukoy ang text types, tayo ay magbabasa talaga ng isang paragraph o ng isang teksto. In order for us to understand it clearly, we need to dissect each part. Mga bata, importante na basahin natin ang kabuuan ng isang teksto para maintindihan natin kung ano bang uri ito ng text type. As I've mentioned earlier, this material that I'm using is already uploaded in Depth and Common so you can immediately access it. To all of our teachers, learners, and parents, the Depth and Commons is free of use. Now, let's begin. Our target for this tutorial session is for you to distinguish the different text types according to its purpose and features. Specifically, we have classification, explanation, enumeration, and the time order. Mga bata, ulitin nga natin ang apat na klase ng text types na ating pag-aaralan sa araw na ito. Sabayan niyo ako ha, isa, dalawa, tatlo. Classification, explanation, enumeration, time order. Magaling! Siguraduhin ninyo na isulat ang apat na salitang ito sa inyong papel o sa inyong kwaderno. Tatandaan na meron tayong apat na klase ng text types na dapat nating maunawaan sa araling ito. Huwag kang mag-alala dahil ipapaliwanag ko ng maayos at mabuti para maintindihan mo ito. Ngunit, simulan natin sa text types. Ano nga ba ito? Listen attentively mga bata. These are texts written for a variety of purposes using different forms and standards of composition. Mga bata, ang text types ay tumutukol sa itsura ng pagkakasulat ng isang paragraph, ng isang teksto. Hindi ba tayo ay mahilig magsulat? Tayo ay mahilig gumawa ng kwento. Ang mga ito ay maaari nating maiuri sa isang klase ng text types. Pero mahalaga na dapat nating maintindihan paano ba natin maiintindihan kung ito ay isang classification text, isang explanation text, isang enumeration text at time order text. Basahin nga ulit ng sabay-sabay ang apat na klase ng text types. Isa, dalawa, tatlo. Classification text. Explanation text. Enumeration text. Time order text. Mukhang handang-handa na kayo mga bata. At dahil dyan, ating gawin ang pagbabasa ng unang teksto o paragraph. Ito ang tinatawag natin na uri ng classification text. Kaya sa mga nagka-clap online, kagaya ni Maria Clarita Padillon, Edita Hunko, Bernadette Lico, at gano'n din kay Edita, maraming maraming salamat. Focus na tayo sa ating aralin. The classification text is organized with the same ideas and concepts. Yan ang tatandaan ninyong mga bata. Ang classification text ay nakaayos ang kanyang ideya na magkakapareho ang kanyang pagkakagrupo. In order for us to help out to distinguish a classification text among other types of text types, these are the three steps for effective classification para masabi natin na ito ay isang classification text. Una, sort things into useful categories. Each paragraph do have their own category. May mga kategorya. At kapag binasa natin, makikita natin na ito ay iniisa-isa na magkakapareho ang kanyang organisasyong ideya. Pangalawa, we need to make sure that all the categories follow a single organized principle. Remember the concept of single organized principle. Hindi siya nalalayo sa panibagong ideya o konteksto. Kapag sinabi natin tungkol lang sa pagkain, tungkol lang sa pagkain ang dapat natin makita. Kapag nakakita tayo ng tungkol sa pagpapaganda at pag-aayos, yun lang din dapat ang ating makikita. Hindi tayo makakakita sa classification text ng nakarambol o iba't ibang konsepto. We need to make it a point that we follow a single organized principle. 
And lastly, there should be examples that fit into each category. Alam ko, yung iba napapakamot. Sabi ni Sir, sabi ni Tutor Mark, madali lang daw, pero ba't nalilito ako? Hindi ka malilito kung makikinig ka ngayon ng mabuti. Tignan ang halimbawa ng paragraph na ito. This is a classification text entitled Schools. Listen to me, my dear learners. Different students attend various types of schools. However, they can usually be classified as either public, private religious, private non-religious, or alternative. Public schools are funded by the state, and most students in the United States attend them. Private religious schools are based around a particular faith such as Catholicism, Judaism, and so forth. The religion is part of the everyday lives of the students, and they also learn about the faiths. All types of private schools do not receive state funding. Therefore, private non-religious schools are simply just that. Schools which do not receive state funding and have the ability to make their own rules. Alternative schools can be made up of a variety of different categories, such as the Montessori program or technical schools. Most students who attend class in an actual school building go to one of these types of institution. Mga bata, ang pamagat ng paragraph na ito ay schools. Ito ay tinutukoy natin bilang isang classification text. Alam niyo ba kung bakit? Sige nga, ibigay nga sa akin ang sagot online. Bakit kaya nasabi na ito ay isang classification text batay sa sinabing schools? Meron bang nabanggit na klase ng mga schools dito? Kung opo, ano-ano ang mga klase ng schools na nabanggit dito sa ating teksto? Pwede nyo itay ang inyong mga kasagutan at aking babasahin ito pag inyong nailagay. Uulitin ko ang aking tanong. Mula sa aking binasa, sinabi ko na ito ay isang halimbawa ng classification text. Can you provide me the listing of schools indicated in this paragraph? The types of schools. Online, are you ready? Hit and give me your answer. Tignan nga natin. Sabi natin kanina, ang classification text ay isang klase ng text type na nag-e-elaborate at nagbibigay ng same organization of thoughts. At kung ating itong titignan, ang una nating halimbawa ay public. Ganyan din ba ang inyong naging sagot? If opo, comes up, magaling. Kaya kay Elsa Navarro na sumugot ng public and private school na mula sa ating teksto, Magaling. We also have here the private religious. We also have here the private non-religious. I'm very happy with Chino Jaime Samonte. Sabi niya, kung ano ang akin nabanggit, yun din ang kanyang nailagay. Napakahusay. At kabilang dyan ang alternative. This type of paragraph is termed as classification text because the organization of ideas is elaborated by these different types of schools according sa kanyang topic o sa kanyang ideya. Di ba nga ang sabi natin kanina, ang classification text ay may iisang ideya. Ano ang kanyang ideya? Tama, schools. At ipinapakita rito ang iba't ibang klase ng schools kung saan ito ay kanyang ipinaliwanag kung paano ito tumatakbo. This paragraph can be seen in this link. So I just lifted this one and I use it as an example. So to all of our participants who are currently watching and gave us the answers, public and private schools, private, religious, private, non-religious, and alternative, like Maria Clarita Padillon, Chino Jaime Samonte, Rihanna Mia, Romulo Opia, very good. Tama po ang inyong kasagutan. Mga bata, natukoy ba natin kung bakit ito classification text? Kung ikaw ay nakaintindi at naunawaan mo, hit like or heart. Tandaan, 
ang classification text ay nagbibigay ng isang ideya at ini-elaborate niya o binibigyan niya ng iba't ibang organisasyong ideya para maipahayag ang isang kabuuan ng teksto. After giving it, like this one, sinabi niya public schools, ipapaliwanag pa siya sa teksto. Sinabi niya private religious, ipiniliwanag pa niya sa teksto. It should be indicated or elaborated. And again, this is an example of classification text. Do you want more? Look at this example. This is entitled Friendships. Allow me to read the context. Although friendship is something that most people enjoy, friendships are not all the same. Some friendships are forged from a long-term familiarity with one another. And other friendships can spring up just by spending one fun evening together. Not all friendships result in daily or even weekly time spent together. Long-term friendships can be kept afloat using communication tools like the internet and telephone. While other friendships result in sporadic get-together sometimes, months, or even years apart. People seek different things in friendship, meaning certain friendships result around trips to a dinner or diner or video games, while other friendships may occur due to a work relationship or general common interest. In our paragraph this time, this is another example of classification text. If you try to look at the title, friendship, mga bata, ipinapaliwanag nito na ang friendship daw ay may dalawang ideya o may dalawang kategorya. Nahanap ba ninyo kung ano ang kanyang tinutukoy? Iisang ideya tungkol sa friendship, ngunit ito ay kanyang in-strand out. Ano kaya sa tingin ninyo ito? If your answer is long-term familiarity as the first one, then you are correct. At ang pangalawang klase naman na kanyang tinutukoy ay spending one fun evening together. Sa so madaling salita, mga bata, sa paragraph na ito, kaya siya naging isang classification text sapagkat kanyang sinabi na ang pakikipagkaibigan ay maaaring makuha dahil sa mahabang panahon, long term. At maaari rin tayo magkaroon ng kaibigan kahit na nakilala lang natin sila ng gabing iyon o nakilala lang natin sila ng maiksing panahon. This is an example of classification text. And when we look at it, it is elaborated in the entirety of the paragraph. Kung kanina, ating ibinigay ang ideya ng paaralan o school at kung ano-ano mga paaralan na ito, this time, we gave the idea about friendship. And friendship could be long-lasting or long-term and it could be short one. Spending one fun evening together, gaya ng nabanggit dito. Yan din ba ang inyong nakita? Kung opo, hit like or heart. Remember, classification text has only one idea, and this idea is about friendship. Since friendship is our main idea, sinasabi nito na ang kanyang pagbibigay ng halimbawa ay maaaring maging long term at maging short term. Remember kids, learners, it's important for us to understand clearly the concept or the context of the paragraph for us to determine if it is a classification text. Your clue word, you should only have one idea. Get it? Now, let's move on. Kaya naman kay Chino Jaime Samonte, tama ang iyong kasagutan. Let's have the next one. By the way, this paragraph is lifted into this source, so I use it as a material to have it in this presentation. Moving on. We now have the explanation text. Explanation text includes a series of events explaining a certain event or phenomenon. Tutor Mark, parang nakakalito. Ano bang explanation text? O makinig ka ng mabuti. Pwede mo rin kunin ang iyong lapis o ballpen at isulat to sa iyong papel. Explanation is a text which tells us about processes relating to 
forming of a natural, social, scientific, and cultural phenomena. This explanation answers the question why and how, and it is often found in science, geography, and history textbooks. Sa madaling salita mga bata, it's basically talked about science. Ipinapahayag niya ang explanation, ang pagpapahayag, kung papaano ba nangyari ang mga pangyayaring ito o mga senaryong ito o yung mga fenomena. Please bear in mind that when we took the word explanation text, ang ating kategorya ay bumubuo tayo ng konsepto sa natural, social, scientific, and cultural phenomena. Ulitin nga natin ito mga bata, isa, dalawa, tatlo. Natural. Social, scientific, cultural. If you read a paragraph involving these four phenomena, therefore, we are eyeing about an explanation text. At gaya nga nang nabanggit, kapag tayo ay nagbabasa ng mga science books, ng history books, di ba may mga tanong tayo gaya ng why and how? At sa pamamagitan ng explanation text ay naipapaliwanag nito ng mabuti at malinaw kung ano ba ang konseptong ito o fenomena. That is the big difference between a classification text and an explanation text. Sa classification text, isa lang ang ideya. Sa explanation text, nagpapaliwanag siya ng konsepto o fenomena. So, for you to understand it clearly, binigay ko ngang example dito. Tingnan nyo, oh. Yung picture or cartoonized version ni Einstein, ibig sabihin, very scientific and we are focusing on an explanation or a phenomena. Remember, it answers the question why and how. Look at this example. Our title is Water Cycle. Isn't it that water cycle is a phenomena? It is a scientific phenomena. Therefore, based on the title itself, madali ko na kagad siyang ma-associate na ito ay isang explanation text, lalo na kapag nabasa ko ang kanyang nilalaman. Allow me to read it. Listen attentively, my dear learners. The water cycle shows the continuous movement of water within the earth and atmosphere. It is a complex system that includes many different processes. Liquid water evaporates into water vapor, condenses to form clouds, and precipitates back to earth in the form of rain and snow. Water in different phases moves through the atmosphere, called transportation. Liquid water flows across the ground, or land, which call as the runoff, into the ground, which is called as infiltration, and percolation, and through the ground, which is the groundwater. Groundwater moves into plants, plant uptake, and evaporates from plants into the atmosphere called transpiration. Solid ice and snow can turn directly into gas, which is what we call a sublimation. The opposite can also take place when water, va water vapor becomes solid, which is termed as deposition. My dear learners, this is not a classification format. Baka mamaya sabihin ninyo, tutor mark classification yan kasi inisa-isa niya eh. Inisa-isa niya yung processes ng water cycle. My dear learners, have you listened earlier? Sabi ko, kapag explanation text, we are focusing into a phenomena. And this concept, kahit na ikinilasify pa niya isa-isa o inilaborit niya isa-isa, ito ay isang pagpapaliwanag kung ano ang water cycle. Therefore, this explanation, the water cycle shows the continuous movement of water within the earth and atmosphere, is a strong justification that this is an explanation text. Remember, an explanation text talks about a phenomenon. At gaya nga ng aking nabanggit, karaniwang nakikita ito sa isang textbook, gaya ng science textbook, history textbook, at maging ang geography. Okay ba yun? Kung opo at naintindihan, hit like or heart. My dear learners, 
we are done describing two type of text types, classification and explanation. Huwag kayong malilito. Kapag nagbasa kayo ng paragraph, tatandaan niyo kapag nag naintindi ay tungkol sa science to ay inelaborate niya explanation text yun kasi sumasagot siya ng how and why pero yung classification text na aking ibinanggit kanina kapag iisa ang kanyang ideya at nagbigay siya ng pagpapaliwanag pero hindi naman tumukoy sa isang phenomena gaya nito then that is classification that is how we can determine if it is classification or explanation. O di ba ang dali lang ngayon? Kung nakuha na ninyo, let's move on. This material is lifted in NOAA.gov education. So if you want to check it, you can access this one and have this material. Now, moving forward, let's have another explanation text. The title is Day and Night. Ulitin nga natin mga bata, anong dalawang tanong ang sinasagot sa explanation text bago ako mag-proceed? Online, can you still remember? If we have those two, then we are eyeing to an explanation text. Bigyan ko kayo ng clue. It starts with letter W and then the other one starts with letter H. Ano kaya ang dalawang tanong na ginagamit natin para matukoy natin na yan talaga ay isang explanation text. Talks about a phenomena. Online, can you give me an answer? If you answered the question why and how, then you got it right. Moving on. Allow me to read this context. Ayan, salamat Edita Hunko. Tama po ang iyong sagot. Ganun din kay Maria Clarita Padilon. Now, Let's have this paragraph. The Earth is one of several planets that orbits the sun, and the moon orbits the Earth. The Earth is essentially a sphere, and the sun is a nearby star, which is an unimaginably large ball of gas that radiates light and heat as products of nuclear reactions. The Earth orbits the sun once every 365 days and rotates about its axis once every 24 hours. Day and night are due to the Earth rotating on its axis, not its orbiting around the sun. The term one day is determined by the time the Earth takes to rotate once on its axis and includes both daytime and nighttime. As you could see here, my dear learners, sinagot niya na naman ang tanong na why and how. Kaya pumapatungkol pa rin siya sa isang explanation text. In addition, it answers a phenomena, a scientific phenomena. And day and night are due, to, are due to the Earth rotating on its axis, not its orbiting around the sun. Itong ere na ito, o itong pangungusap na ito, ang nagbigay pa ng strong justification dito sa ating paragraph para matukoy bisa, bilang isang explanation text. So I hope nakuha na ninyo ang konsepto Paano natin masasabi na ito ay isang explanation text? Is that clear, my dear learners? Kung opo, hit like or heart. Nakakatapos sa tayo ng dalawa. Itong material ito ay lifted mula po sa education.vic.gov.au na maaari nyo rin pong magamit para sa inyong pagtuturo. Sa mga kaguro, maaari nyo ma-download ang presentation na ito sa DepEd Commons. Moving forward, we now move on to the third type of text types. Let's have number three, the enumeration text. Many learners are having difficulty when we talk about enumeration text. Mga bata, common na nagiging pagkakamali ito dahil na-associate sa classification text. Tandaan, magkaiba silang dalawa. Para maunawaan natin, makinig ng mabuti ha, the paragraph has a listing of important points on the text. It focuses on the characteristics and features. I repeat, it focuses on the characteristics and features. As guide, it uses these signal words. Ito ay makikita sa enumeration text pero hindi makikita sa isang classification text. And look at the following. For example, 
also, for instance, in addition, in fact, finally, these are just a few of signal words that can be seen in an enumeration text. Kahit na inilista niya at iisang konsepto o iisang ideya, ito ay may focus sa pagbibigay ng karakteristik o ng kanyang mga features. Hindi lang basta inisa-isa. Yung classification kasi, inisa-isa. Pero sa enumeration, inisa-isa mo na pero binigyan mo pa ng pagpapakapaliwanag at gumagamit ka ng mga signal words para nakaayos siya in an organized manner for you to fully understand what is enumeration text is tignan natin po ang halimbawa ng paragraph na ito the title is tsunamis and many might think that tutor mark sabi mo ang scientific phenomena doon siya sa ano sa explanation Take note, my dear learners, there are some instances na kahit scientific ang kanyang pangalan, pero kapag binasa natin, nagpo-fall siya sa enumeration text. Kaya importante na basahin nyo pa rin ang nilalaman. Hindi sapat ang pagbabasa ng title. Importante basahin din ang laman ng context natin. And allow me to read the paragraph. Tsunamis are giant waves caused by earthquakes or volcanic eruptions under the sea. Out in the depths of the ocean, tsunami waves do not dramatically increase in height. But as the wave travel inland, they build up to higher and higher heights as the depth of the ocean decreases. In addition, the speed of tsunami waves depends on ocean depths rather than the distance from the source of the wave. Also, tsunami waves may travel as fast as jet planes over deep waters, only slowing down when reaching shallow waters. While tsunamis are often referred to as tidal waves, this name is discouraged by oceanographers because tides have little to do with these giant waves. My dear learners, this paragraph might somehow tell us that it is an explanation text. But when we try to look at it, it is enumerated clearly kung papaano ba nabubuo ang isang tsunami at gumamit siya ng signal words. Natukoy pa ninyo kung ano ang mga signal words na ginamit dito sa paragraph? Online, can you identify these signal words? That's why instead of having it as a natural explanation text, it became an enumeration text dahil kanyang inelaborate at iniisa-isa kung papaano ba mabibuild itong tsunami. Can you identify it? Online, bigay nga sa akin ang sagot, what are the signal words that is used or that were used in this paragraph? If you answer also, and in addition, just like Chino Jaime Samonte and Edita Hunko, ganun din kay Brent Ormita, very good. Because of these two signal words, nag, naging enumeration text siya dahil ipinapakilala nito o ipinapaliwanag nito paano ba nabibuild yung tsunami. However, what will happen if these two words are not there? What will happen to this paragraph? If your answer would be, it will fall back to an explanation text, then you are correct because it will go back now to the phenomena. Since we are utilizing this one, nagiging conversational siya, yan ay ginagawa na po o nagiging isang enumeration text. Yan ang pagkakaiba ng dalawa. Yung explanation text, masyado siyang Concrete in a way na ang kanyang pagkakabigkas ay organized. Ito sa enumeration text ay nagbibigay siya ng putol-putol para pagdugtong-dugtongin ang konsepto. It uses signal words such as in addition, also, finally, for example, and the like. Yan ang halimbawa ng enumeration text. So I hope, my dear learners, if you are if you encounter this type of uh, paragraph, tandaan lagi, 
may signal words bang ginamit? At kapag may sagot na opo, then you got it right. It is an enumeration text. So wag natin lilituhin ang ating sarili. Tandaan, may mga items o may mga paragraph man tayo makita na somehow associated sa science, kagaya nito, but if it is elaborated in this manner, na enumerate siya and use the signal words, then that will not fall on to an explanation text. Instead, it will be an enumeration text. Clear? Now, let's have the next one. By the way, this paragraph is lifted in OceanServiceNOAA.gov. Moving on. The easiest actually among the text type and one of my favorite and my favorite is actually the time order text. At mamaya sasabihin nyo, ay kaya pala favorite to ni Tutor Omar kasi napakadali niyang matukoy. These paragraph or ideas on the text are organized according to time and arranged in sequential order. Uulitin ko mga bata, ang paragraph na ito ay nakaayos according to time. Ibig sabihin, hindi pwedeng mauna yung ibang bahagi hanggat di nauuna yung isa. Parang pag nagluto kayo, di ba kapag nagsaing, pwede ka bang magsaing ng hindi mo pa nilalagyan ng tubig? Di ba nilalagyan muna natin ng water? After that, di ba sinusukat? So there are step-by-step -step processes. The, there is an arranged or sequential order na hindi natin pwedeng paghalu-haluin dahil hindi siya lalabas sa maayos. Therefore, it's like a procedure. It's like an instruction. It is used in telling stories, giving procedures or directions, and even instructions. Huwag kayong malilito mga bata kapag sinabi nating time order kasi baka mamaya sabihin niyo, Tutor Mark, gumagamit din to ng ano, signal words kagaya ng enumeration text. Tandaan, ang pagkakaiba naman ni time order, may sinusunod siyang flow o time na hindi pwedeng mauna yung isa sa isa. Example of sin signal words are as follows. First, second, third, next, before, after, then, finally, lastly. I'm sure that you are familiar with this at naririnig natin yan minsan sa mga teachers natin, lalo na kapag gumagawa tayo ng experiment before o kapag meron siyang binibigay na directions. Yan ang tinatawag natin na time order text. Nakuha na po ba mga bata? Tandaan, kagaya ng enumeration text, the time order text is also using signal words. But the difference is that it utilizes time. A sequential order. Hindi pwedeng mabali yung sequence na yun. At yun ang inyong tatandaan. So remember, we have clues on how we can determine if it is a time order text or an enumeration text. Okay na ba yun? Now, let's have the example. This is entitled Toasted Bread Bowl. Tutor Mark, bakit ganun? Di ba kapag... May cookbook o gusto nating matuto? Hindi ba naka-step by step process siya? At tignan nyo ang halimbawa nito. Make the easiest homemade croutons with the soft centers from these bowls. First, preheat the oven to 400 degrees. Second, cut the reserved centers into one each cube. Coat lightly with olive oil cooking spray. Then, place in a zip top plastic bag. Add one teaspoon desired dried herbs or seasoning. Next, seal bag and shake to coat. Spread bread cubes in a single layer on a baking sheet and coat again with cooking spray. Bake at 400 degrees, stirring occasionally, seven to nine minutes or until lightly toasted. Cool completely. Finally, Store in an airtight container for three days. And as you could see here, ibinigay niya ang step-by-step -step process na hindi pwedeng mauna yung isa sa isa. The paragraph or the sentences are arranged in a way that it is by sequence. Kagaya pag tayo ay nagkwento. Hindi ba kapag tayo ay nagkwento sa ating mga kaibigan sa isang pangyayari, Sinasabi natin na, ay una, ito yung nangyari. Pangalawa, ito yung nangyari. Pangatlo, itong sumunod. Pangatlo, pang-apat at pang-lima. 
para maayos ang organization ng thoughts. And that is the same concept when we talk about time order text. Online, my dear learners, we are using here the following signal words. First, second, then, next, and finally. And as you could see, ang dali lang di bang matukoy mga bata? Napakadali lang dahil nakikita natin kung ano ang mga ginamit natin ng mga signal words. So please make sure, my dear learners, that when we talk about these things, hindi dapat siya, hindi natin dapat lituhin ang ating mga sarili. Meron siyang kanya-kanyang ideya at konsepto na dapat natin tandaan. And this material is lifted in www.myrecipes.com. So, we move on now to our exercise. Are you ready, my dear learners? If you are ready, then please get your paper and pen and write down letter A if it is a classification text. Letter B if it is an explanation text. C if it is an enumeration text. And letter D if it is an if it is a time order text. Mga bata, uulitin ko. Kapag sinabi natin classification text, it has only one idea but give details onto it and explaining. Pero hindi siya scientific in concept. Dahil kapag scientific in concept, yun ang pangalawa, the explanation text. When it explains about a phenomenon, a phenomenon. Next is an enumeration text. We're in sa enumeration text, pwede siyang maging scientific in nature. Pero ang kanyang ipinapahayag ay pagkakaayos o pagkakalista ng konsepto o deya. But that is different with time order. Even if we enumerate it, it is following a time or sequential order. Ganun sila dapat natin tukuyin. At kapag ganun ang ating iniisip, matutukoy natin ang tamang sagot. Ready na ba online? Let's go! First. It was thus when we entered the tiny grocery store on the edge of the deserted road. The store was lit by a single bulb hanging near the entrance. Also, the aisles in the store were narrow, allowing only one shopper at a time. In addition, there are ancient wooden shelves lining the aisle were cluttered with dust-covered cans and boxes. Lastly, yellow Labels on the cans held the secret of the store. The place is very creepy. In number one, is it a classification text, explanation text, enumeration text, or a time order text? My dear learners, wag kayong magpapakalito ha. Kapag sinabi natin enumeration text, gumagamit din siya ng signal words. Pag sinabi natin time order text, gumagamit din siya ng signal words pero meron siyang tinutukoy na sequential order. Isipin natin ang mabuti ito. Hindi pwedeng maging A at hindi pwedeng maging B ang sagot. Now, let's determine. Is it C or is it letter D? Remember, meron tayong konseptong sinusunod. Is it enumeration text or time order text? Online? Hit me your answer. Ayan, mukhang marami akong nakikitang letter D. Tignan natin kung letter D nga ang sagot. Ayan. My dear learners, it's actually letter C. You know why? Makinig ha, online. Bakit siya letter C at hindi letter D? Kahit na gumamit siya ng first, lastly, etc. Yan ay signal words. Huwag tayo magpapakalito. Kung ayun yung titignan, di ba pwede namang mauna ang ibang mga tinukoy na mga parts o paglalarawan because when we tell stories, this one can be enumerated. At sa nakita natin dito, enumerate niya isa-isa yung mga konsepto pero wala tayong tinutukoy na time order. Pag wala tayong tinukoy na time o sequential ng events, then yan ay matutukoy natin bilang isang enumeration text. So sabi ko nga kanina, di ba, huwag tayong magpapakalito kasi sometimes parang magkakapareho ang kanyang konsepto. Please make sure and bear in mind that a time order text has a sequence in order na dapat nating sinusunod. 
eto, kahit magkarambul-rambul ang kanyang linya, ay grocery store pa rin ang kanyang tinutukoy. Hindi ba? Tandaan, kahit pagbalibalik na rin natin yung sinabi niyang lastly, also, first, kasi ina-explain lang naman niya eh. Kahit pagbalibalik na rin natin, ang konsepto na kanyang tinutukoy ay yung grocery store. Hindi kagaya sa time order text na dapat sunod-sunod siya. Kagaya ng paano ka dapat magbayad sa isang grocery store. Eh hindi naman ganoon ang kanyang tinukoy eh. So nakuha na ba natin, my dear learners? So remember, yon ang proseso paano natin matutukoy. Let's move on to the second one. Number two, water influences the intensity of climate variability and change. It is a key part of extreme events such as drought and floods. Its abundance and timely delivery are critical for meeting the needs of society and ecosystem. Humans use water for drinking, industrial applications, irrigating agriculture, hydropower, waste disposal, and recreation. It is important that water sources are protected both for human uses and ecosystem health. In many areas, water supplies are being depleted because of population growth, pollution, and development. These stresses have been made worse by climate variations and change that affect the hydrologic cycle. Tignan maigi, yan ba ay classification text, explanation text, and numeration text or time order text? O oh, ito, ah, unahan ko na kayo mga bata. Hindi yan enumeration text at hindi yan time order text. Pero alin sa dalawa kaya? Is it A, classification text, or B, explanation text? Think. Bibigyan ko kayo ng clue. Kapag naging scientific o naging phenomena, dyan siya papasok. Mukhang tama ang mga sagot ng ating mga learners. The correct answer is letter B. It is an explanation text. Even if it classifies how humans use water, still, it is an explanation about a phenomena, the hydrologic cycle. How, how we have... The depletion because of population growth, pollution, and development. So kapag binasa natin yan mga bata, pandaan, laging halos magkapareho yung A and B. Pero kapag tinukoy natin ang naging scientific talaga siya eh. Therefore, that will fall on to letter B, explanation text. At ang ganitong teksto ay pwede natin makita sa isang textbook. Is that clear? Kaya kay Ryan Cesar Beltran, Dayan Malana Torre, Harvey Oliveros, Beatrix Ozeta, at Ayesha Santos, you got it right. The correct answer is letter B, explanation text. Moving forward. Number three, dogs are domesticated animals that have been living with humans for generations. Dogs can be classified in a number of different ways. For example, they can be classified by breed. Examples of different breeds include beagles, basset hounds, poodles, and countless. Others are defined by the American Kennel Club or AKC. They can also be classified by their, by their role in the lives of their masters and the work they do. For example, a dog might be a family pet, a working dog, a show dog, or a hunting dog. In many cases, dogs are defined both by their breed and their role. For example, a dog could be a beagle that is a family, a family pet. I think this one is very easy. Choose, is it A, classification text, B, explanation text, C, enumeration text, or D, time order text? Nakakatuwa naman online at halos tama ang aking nakikita. Tama po, Rihanna Mi Romulo Pia at ganun din kay Maria Clarita Padilon at Chino Jaime Samonte. The correct answer is letter A, classification text. What's the idea? Dog. What is elaborated or being given here? Dogs can be a show dog, a working dog, a pet, or a hunting dog. And it even further gives other ideas about the breeds. Kaya classification text. For sure, there are some that have been, Mark, baka pwedeng explanation text yun kasi nagpapaliwanag din. Look. Is there a scientific phenomena? None. If there's none, then that is a classification text. Ganun lang natin siya tutukuyin. Okay? 
So, sa mga sumagot ng letter A, kagaya rin ni Jibel, Catrella, Moreno, Hular, and Ranz Magayaga, ganun din kay Harvey Oliveros. Very good. Now, we move on to number four. O, eto ha. Listen attentively. First, divide the meat and gently form it into four balls. Second, flatten the balls into three fourth inch thick patties. Also, flatten the top and sides of each patty to ensure that the thickness is the same throughout. Next, use your fingers to make a shallow well in the top of each patty. Season the patties with salt and pepper. After, all the grill grate using a pair of tongs and a paper towel deep in canola oil. Lastly, cook with the wells facing up until the burgers release easily, four to five minutes for medium. So, my dear learners, is it A, B, C, or B? Ay, pag may nagkamali dito, ewan ko na lang ha. The correct answer is letter D. It's a time-ordered text dahil kapag gumawa ka ng burger, hindi naman pwedeng ilubog mo na lang naman yun sa, sa kumukulong mantika, di ba? There is still a process. And that process is the time-ordered text. Remember that, my dear learners, kaya kay Ryan Cesar Beltran, Atina Marie Files, ganun din kay Diane Malara Torre, and Rans Magay Magayaga, you got it right. Tama po ang inyong kasagutan. Now we move on to our last example. For our last exercise, medyo mahaba siya. Listen to me attentively. The genre of rock music encompasses many distinct styles under the same umbrella. While the genre began, began with guitar and piano-driven popular songs, today there are literally hundreds of variations on the original. Electronic rock contains elements of computer-generated or synthesized instruments, including drum machines and electronic guitars, in addition to some of the elements from the original movement. Heavy metal focuses less on melody and more on heavy guitars, while folk rock typically uses a much more acoustic, acoustic sound with instruments like banjos and harmonicas. Emerging in the late 1970s were glam rock and punk rock, which share a stripped-down sound and emphasize aesthetics. While punk rock tends to be more aggressive and glam tends to be more theatrical, even today, rock music tends to share a distinctive beat with electric or acoustic guitars. What do you think is the answer? Is it A, classification text, B, explanation text, C, enumeration text, or D, time order text? Ayan, mukhang alam na alam na ng ating mga participants dahil hindi siya gumamit ng scientific phenomena. But it has the same idea. You got it right, Clarence John Lirio, Diane Malana, Torre, Chino Jaime Samonte, Jewel Catrip, Moreno Hular, and Atina Marie Friles. The correct answer is A, a classification text. My dear learners, we are now done with our week one session for the different text types. And I'm very happy to share with you that this material is uploaded already in Depth and Commons wherein you can utilize it, download it for free, para makapag-review at tatandaan. Apat ang ating text types. Classification text, explanation text, enumeration text, and time order text. Huwag malilito, tatandaan lamang, Basahin ang context o ang paragraph na mabuti at suriin kung papaano siya matutukoy bilang isang klase ng text type. Muli, ako si Tutor Mark at ako ay nagpapasalamat. Kung kayo ay may katanungan, suggestion or recommendation, you can always email us at edtech at deped.gov.ph. Maraming maraming salamat. Kita-kits tayo sa susunod na linggo para sa ating susunod na session para sa English 5. Ako si Tutor Mark. Alam! Sigurado ako na marami ka na naman na natutuhan sa ating itulay tutorial session ngayong araw. Tandaan, ito ay hindi lamang para sa ating mga mag-aaral, kundi pati rin sa ating mga minamahal na guro at mga magulang na kaagapay natin para maituloy ang pagkatuto sa kabila ng nararanasang pandemya. Patuloy ding sumubaybay sa DepEd TV para sa mga araling ginawang video episodes. 
Mapapanood ito mula lunes hanggang sabado, alas 7 ng umaga hanggang alas 7 ng gabi sa inyong mga telebisyon. Abangan bukas mula alauna ng tanghali ang iba pang aralin sa ating Ito Live free online tutorial session sa Filipino. I-like and subscribe at manatiling nakasubaybay sa ating Ito Live tutorial session sa DepEd EdTech Unit FB page at Educational Technology Unit channel sa YouTube at sa DepEd Tayo at DepEd Philippine Social Media Accounts. Paalam!